Hi, everyone. This is Lisa. I hope you all are having a wonderful day. We come today with another lesson. And remember, when you think about quitting, remember why you started. Just like my mug say, trust the journey. This mug is a tough mug. It has fallen and has not broken. It's real good ceramic, everyone. So trust the journey. Trust the journey. Um, YouTube suggested about a greeting about saying that we can say certain things that you're not in it alone and things like that. And each and every time I come to you all with a, a greeting on my videos, it's always a little something extra or a little something different. It could be a joke, a word of encouragement. It could be um, a song. You all know I like to sing sometimes a song. So I don't stand with the status quo. I'm a person that's different. I always have been. Probably always will be. I don't follow the crowd. Never have been a crowd follower. I'm a leader. Okay. So God has sent us to be leaders and not followers. All right, everyone. So today I'm, I'm doing a good video today. It's going to be a strong video. You all, you all, you know, please stay with me through this. This is a strong video today. This is talking about how Jacob Russell's with, with 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 God and the angel, the angel of God, okay, for his identity, to get his identity, to, because we know that in the womb, he was pulling the heels of his brother Esau, because he wanted to be firstborn, and Esau was, so God said he will bless the older brother, okay, so he was, was, was doing little tricks in the womb, and he had to wrestle to get his identity to become from Jacob to Israel. So what do you think about that, everyone? Give me some input. Give me some feedback. Don't just look at the videos and not say anything. Give me some input. How do you feel about wrestling with God for your identity? What is your identity in Christ? Who are you in Christ Jesus? We're not, our identity does not come from this world. Our, den, our identity comes from God. Okay, so we're going to have a powerful lesson today. I'm going to talk to you um, from enterthebible.org. Okay, talk about the background of this. I'm going to talk to you about the discipleship lesson from the life of Jacob. Jacob wrestles with God and man, Genesis 32, 33. You can get your Bibles out to follow me, you all. We are going to be in Genesis 32 to 33 with this, everybody. And um, just, just be in one accord with the Lord. Put everything away from you so your minds can be stayed on him, you all. Trust, trust the journey. Trust the journey, everyone. And I just thank you again for those who are now just joining me and for those who always have been joining me. So you all just pray right now. Heavenly Father, I thank you. Ensure Hamashiach, God, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who was and is to come, the great I am, the almighty El Shaddai. We just thank you, Father. We praise you. We lift up your name on high. Father God, weeping may endure for a night, but joy and comes in the morning. May someone be encouraged from this lesson. May others come to the channel and invite others, oh God. Lord Jesus, may we receive your word, your glory, your salvation. Lord Jesus, your truth, the true gospel, death, resurrection, and burial. Father God, I just say thank you, Lord. May you just let no man hinder us, oh God. Put all evil away from us. If we've done anything against you or others, let us repent and ask for forgiveness in Jesus' mighty name. Oh God, let us just bless, be blessed in, in Christ Jesus. For your name's sake, oh God. All glory be to the King of Kings, Lord of heaven and earth. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. 
This video is covered in the blood, everyone. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. How are you today? Hello, 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 hello. How are you today? Hey, 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 hello. How are you? How are you today? Hallelujah. That was just came to me in my spirit all of a sudden. <laughs> I love you all. I love you all so much. That's why I come to you all so much because we have to be in this word. We have to be in this word. Jesus Christ is everlasting through everlasting, everyone. Yes, 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 yes. So, you all, it's been raining cats and, and dogs here in Merle. And how ha has the weather been in you all location? <laughs> First, I was concerned about my flowers. Um, dying, some of them died, the tulips, I don't know if I planted them the wrong time or what too early or what have you, but I put some more flowers and, and, and flowers are growing now, so much rain, the flowers have really been growing, so that's a, that's a plus. Okay, everyone, now we're going to talk today about Jacob, the brother of Esau, the twin brother Esau, okay, wrestling. With the angel of God, everyone. So you all ready? All right. Now in Genesis 32, 22, 32. Jacob wrestles with God. Okay. God commends Jacob for his successful wrestling and blesses him with a new name and a new shape for his future, calling him Israel. Now, one of, of the more remarkable narratives in the Jacob story focus on God's wrestling with Jacob. And blessing him. Okay, so J Jacob received a blessing out of this wrestling. Fearful and vulnerable, Jacob is about to re enter Canaan and confront his brother Esau. Okay, so Jacob was being fearful and vulnerable, you know, about his brother Esau. God struggles with him for an entire night. This encounter anticipates, indeed, shapes Jacob's encounter with his brother. So he was able to wrestle with God and, and get his strength from God, get a new identity in God, in Christ Jesus. And this enabled him to help approach Esau. Okay. The most unusual, even stunning feature of his story has to do with God. That God would engage Jacob physically and then not prevail. Okay. So, so God could, could win, but he also could. He wanted to do something with Jacob, okay? So Jacob physically and then uh, not real. God here appears in human form to encounter Jacob with a, a comparable level of power. Okay, it was about a power. One should not think that God could have pinned Jacob at any moment. God chose. As for Jacob, he is not passive or submissive. He holds his own with God and even when struck, we retains the power to grant God's request for a release, though daylight would mean death upon seeing God. Yet God retains the power to grant Jacob the blessing he desperately wants. Okay. Now the blessing... Jacob wanted to be blessed, okay, because he wasn't the firstborn, Esau was, all right? God breaks the impasse by making the first move, all right? This is God's move, blessing Jacob and giving him the name Israel. The name is interpreted to mean that Jacob has been successful in his struggles with God and human beings. That's what this means. The blessing seals the prior promises in 2815 at just the point where Jacob's life is most in danger. God binds himself to go with Jacob into future struggles. See 3310. Overall, the story may be viewed as God initiated exercise in human becoming, shaping and sharpening the faithfulness of human beings for the challenges to be faced in their journeys. Okay, because we all are going to be faced with challenges in our journeys, you all. So I say trust the journey. All right. And then after that, Jacob wrestles at Peniel. Okay. All right, everyone. So we're going to go here.
I want to read with you all, and then I'm going to go into Life of Jacob from JesusWalk.com. But right now, I'm going to read to you from the Bible, my Bible. Follow me, everybody. Genesis 32, 22 through 32. Get this, you all, a little complicated. Genesis 32, 22 through 32, everyone. Okay. And he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two women servants and his 11 sons and passed over the ford Jabbok. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had. And Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. So the socket, the hip socket, okay, was out of joint as he wrestled. He was injured. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. The angel of God. Okay, he's wrestling with the angel of God. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince has thou power with God and with men and has prevailed, prince with God. And Jacob asked him and said, tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. That's when Jacob received this blessing from God. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. He faced God and his life was preserved. Okay. And as he passed over Peniel, the sun rose upon him and halted upon his thigh. He was limping. Okay. So Jacob wrestled with the angel of God. God asked him what his name was. He said his name was Jacob. He saw God. It was like face to face. Okay, so to speak with God. And he preserved him. Okay, he blessed him. Therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sinew which shank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh until this day, because he taught, touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh and the sinew that shank. Okay, so now, to this day, the Israelites don't eat a certain part of the bone of sinew because it is hip thigh. Okay, all right, because of that, when Jacob was rustling. All right, so everyone, let's go to Life of Jacob from JesusWalk.com. No sooner than Jacob is clear of the threat of Laban's armband, then he hears news that it is much more troubling. Jacob had sent messengers ahead to let his brother Esau know he is coming. They returned with the report. We went to your brother Esau, and now he's coming to meet you. And 400 men are with him. Laban had only suffered loss of property. Esau has been nurturing a murderer which against Jacob for 20 years. No wonder Jacob is in great fear and distress. 32-7. The sign of angelic army. 32-1-2. Okay. But knowing this was coming, God sends a wonderful sign to Jacob. Jacob also went on his way and the angels of God met him. When Jacob saw them, he said, this is the camp of God. So he named him uh, that place Manhanam. Now, in Bethel, Jacob had seen angels in his dream, ascending and descending the staircase to heaven and called the place for thrill. You know, you all that's known as Jacob's ladder, house of God. Here he sees angels and exclaims, this is the camp of God who had promised him in Bethel to watch over him wherever he went has not forgotten. Now, Jacob's small encampment of wives and children, servants and livestock is matched by God's nearby, nearby encampment of an army of angels. When Jacob moves, the angelic army moves as well. 
shadowing him, protecting him from any harm. When Laban had gotten his band of men within range to threaten Jacob, God had spoken a stern warning and Laban had complied. Jacob realizes that his camp is protected by God's camp, so he names the place Menheim in Hebrew, two camps. Okay. Now, Genesis 32, 1 through 2. Why does God reveal the angel army to Jacob? What is the significance of the presence of this army? Why do you think he calls the place Menheim to camps? Now, I'm preparing to meet Esau in 32, 3 through 21. Jacob knows he must reconcile with Esau if he is to live in the land to, to which God has sent him. And so he makes careful preparations. Now, remember, when Jacob was wrestling with the Lord, this was to prepare him to be able to be powerful and be um, able to have that, that God fearing will in him to meet his brother. OK, so he was very fearful. OK. This is what you are to say, my master Esau, to master Esau. Your servant Jacob says, I have been staying with Laban and have remained there till now. I have cattle and donkeys, sheep and goats, man service and maid service. Now I am sending this message to my Lord that I may find favor in your eyes. Okay, the messengers are to bring several things to Esau's attention now, okay? Now, the peacefulness. Jacob has been with their uncle Laban for 20 years and is only now returning home. Jacob shows that his past actions constitute no threat to Esau and that he has not secretly returned home without Esau's knowledge to somehow gain further advantage over Esau. Now, the wealthy. Jacob is wealthy and returns home with a considerable fortune. Thus, he does not need what Esau has and imposes no threat to Esau's goods. He does not need to exercise the birthright inheritance of double the inheritance Esau would receive. Jacob is dependently, independently wealthy, and he is not sneaking home his tail between his legs. He comes on his own and in person to be rapping with. Okay, now we're going to read a little bit more to you all. Humble. Jacob comes humbly. Okay, he instructs his servants to refer to Esau as his lord, his superior. All his life, Jacob has been struggling to be Esau's lord. He was always wanting something. He had tricked Esau into handing over his birthright, we all remember that, and had deceived in order to receive the blessing of the firstborn from his father. So it started in deception. But now he comes acknowledging Esau as his lord. This may be the formal... Uh, the furrows of courtesy, but it is the furrows nevertheless. Okay. Now healing. Jacob comes to seek Esau's favor and heal the rift between them. All right, everyone. Let's read a little bit more. I'm in chapter Genesis chapter 33. And Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, Esau came and with them 400 men and he divided the children unto Leah and unto Rachel and unto the two handmaids. And he put it the handmaids and their children foremost, and Leah and her children after, and Rachel and Joseph hindermost. And he passed over before them and bowed him to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. And Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him, and they wept. And he lifted up his eyes and saw the women and the children and said, Who are those with thee? And he said, The children which God hath graciously given thy servant. Then the handmaidens came near they and their children, and they bowed themselves. And Leah also with her children came near and bowed themselves. And after came Joseph near and Rachel, and they bowed themselves. And he said, What meanest thou by all this drove which I met? And he said, These are the fine grace in the sight of my Lord. And Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep that that thou hast unto thyself. And Jacob said, Nay, I pray thee, if now I have faith, found grace in thy sight, then receive my present at my hand. For therefore I have seen thy face, as though I have seen the face of God, and thou was pleased with me. So Jacob is trying to tell Esau that he found favor with God. He's seen the face of God, you know, pretty much um, wrestled with God for his identity and his blessing. 
and God has sought favor with him. Okay. He said, take, I pray thee, my blessing that is brought to thee because God have dealt graciously with me and because I have enough. And he urged him and he took it. And he said, let us take our journey and let us go and I will go before thee. And he said unto him, my Lord knoweth that the children are tender and the flocks and herds with you young are with me. And if men should overdrive them one day, all the flock will die. Okay. He weak. Let my Lord, I pray thee, pass over before his servant and I will lead on softly. According as the cattle that goeth before me and the children be able to endure until I come unto my Lord unto seer, the livestock. Okay. And Esau said, let me now leave with thee some of the folk that are with me. And he said, what need of it? Let me find grace in the sight of my Lord. So Esau returned that day on his way unto Seir. And Jacob journeyed to Succoth and built him in house and made booths for his cattle. Therefore, the name of the place is called Succoth, the shelters. And Jacob came to Shalem, a city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan, when he came from Pandaram. And pitched his tent before the city. And he bought a parcel of his field where he had spread his tent at the hand of the children of Hamor, Shechem's father, for a hundred pieces of money. And he erected their altar and called it Elo, Elo, he is Israel. And Dinah, the daughter of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hivitite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay her with her and defiled her. Okay, so here we run back to JesusWalk.com. Jacob prays in 32, 9 through 12. O God of my father Abraham, God of my father Isaac, O, o Lord, who said to me, Go back to your country and your relatives, and I will make you prosper. I am unworthy of all the kindness and faithfulness you have shown your servant. I had only my staff when I crossed the Jordan, but now I have become two groups. Save me, I pray, from the hand of my brother Esau, and also the mothers with their children. But you have saw I will surely make you prosper, and you will uh, make descendants like the sand of the sea, which cannot be counted. 32, 9 through 12. Now, you all. So Jacob was afraid of what Esau could do to him. But when he wrestled with the spirit of God, he became blessed. Okay. And it, it allowed him to be humbled himself towards his brother. Jacob reminds God that he is returning to obedience to God's own instructions. He acknowledges his own unworthiness of God's great blessings to him. We see both humility and thankfulness have grown in Jacob these 20 years since he uh, first met God at Bethel. See, that's what God wants us to do. He, he wants us to be humble, to come and humble, because it's through the grace of God that he blesses us. You know, it's not of ourselves that we must boast, but it's through the grace of God that he blesses us, everyone, in his mercy. Now, he asked for God's salvation. He said, rescue and protection from Esau. He admits his fear for himself and for his wives and young children. All under 13 years of age. The kind of transparency in prayer is another indication that Jacob has gotten to know God. He concludes with a reminder of God's promise to him and his ancestors that God will prosper him and make him fruitful. See, that's who prospers us is the Lord. Okay, God Almighty. Does Jacob remind God of his promises as some kind of persuasive leverage? That's a question, perhaps. But we understand that these promises are the bedrock of Jacob's own faith. He believes and has acted on God's instructions to return home. God has confirmed the blessings of Abraham to him, and he believes them, too. I think Jacob reminds God of these promises as a faith statement. It is this faith that props Jacob up when he is afraid. He shares with his God both his fears and his faith. And so his prayer is an authentic, faith-filled prayer 
how Jacob has grown. So that's how we grow, you all. When we can talk to God and pray to God about our fears, okay, um, and just be thankful in God and just trusting in God and humbling ourselves, humbling and bowing down to the Lord, everyone. Because that's when we grow in Christ, when we can confront our fears through God by praying to him. It's anything that you're fearful of, you can confront the Lord about it. Whether it could be a disease, a sickness, an illness, a situation, you know, you can always approach God in prayer. Tell God if you're fearful, okay? Ask God. To make you humble. All right. So it grew. He grew in faith. He grew in his strength and faith and power. He gained a full identity. He went from Jacob to be called Israel. All right. Now in Genesis 32, 9 through 12. What does Jacob's prayer tell us about his fears? about his faith and about his pride and what are the signs of spiritual growth, everybody? You see in Jacob since he left Canaan to go to Haran years before. How did you see him grow in his faith, everybody? Maybe you all can talk back um, to me in this, with this. Jacob prepares a succession of gifts to appease Esau, 32, 13 to 21. Look at the quality of animals he gives to Esau. Okay. And 32, 22 through 21. 32, 22 through 31. Okay, when I read that already, you all. The quantity of animals he gives to Esau. 200 female and 20 male goats. Okay, it's just two, 220. 200 ewes and 20 rams, that's 220. 30 female camels and their young, that's 30. 40 cows and 10 bulls, that's 50. 20 female donkeys and 10 male donkeys, that's 30. So the total of that is 550, everyone. 550 animals, 490 of which are female and will cause Esau's herds to increase rapidly. All right. Jacob gives instructions that the animals are to be sent as individual groups, each with space between it and the next so that the cumulative effort would be one gift after another. Perhaps if Esau is angry when they encounters the first herd, when he encounters the first herd, his anger will have abated somewhat by the time the fifth herd reaches him. Either herder it is bring the same humble message when he meets Esau's army. Bring the same humble message. They belong to your servant Jacob. They are gifts sent to my lord Esau and he is coming behind us. That's in 32.18. Jacob's purpose is clearly stated. I will pacify him with these gifts. I am sending on ahead. Later when I see him, perhaps he will receive me. In 32.20. Now, Jacob seeks to pacify with generous gifts, a tribal chieftain whom he had often much as centuries later. Abigail, the wife of a Kirish Nabal, who assaulted David, seeks to pacify David with gifts and gracious words to David, who was coming with his own 400 men in 1 Samuel 25, 18 through 31. Jacob was traveling down the east side of the Jordan southward in the direction of Seir. Esau's lands in Edom. He has just come to the Jabbok Ravine, a small river flowing into the Jordan from the east. Jacob has sent the herds of animals ahead of him the previous afternoon, but he stays the night on the bank of Jabbok. Jacob divides his party into two groups in 32, 7 and 8, and 33, 1, 2. Jacob's final preparation is to divide his party in two groups to avoid a wholesale massacre. Now, wrestling with God, 32-22-32. At nightfall, Jacob sends his wives and children to cross the ford and the Jabbok River with all the possessions ready for an early start in the morning, but he stays behind as the scriptures records. 
So Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. Okay. Who is the strange antagonist? What is the significance of this struggle? While the event is shrouded by darkness and mystery, several things emerge as we meditate on it. God the wrestler. First, we find that the man is a manifestation of God himself. Hosea calls him both an angel and God. In the womb, he grasps the heel of uh, Esau. As a man, he struggled with God. He struggled with the angel and overcame him. He wept and begged for his faith in Hosea 12, 3, 4. Will God reveal himself as a wrestler? Isn't God gentle and peaceful? Yes, and he is also just and holy and a God of vengeance. Don't forget that, you all. Both the Old and New Testament give many indications of God's violent judgment upon the unrighteous. In his letters, Paul refers to spiritual conflict as wrestling. Both struggling with the dark powers as well as struggling in prayer before God. Ephesians 6.12, Colossians 1.20, 9.21-4.12. Who is Jacob struggling with in the night? Is it with a ghost? A phantom? A river god? God in a ford of Jabbok? A spirit who can only manifest itself in the darkness and must flee at dawn? All these pagan theories of Jacob's struggle ignore the text itself which clearly identifies the wrestler as none other than God. It's in 32, 28, 30. All right, everyone. <sighs> yes, this is so, so symbolic, everyone. Symbolism and reality of this, you all. Was this a symbolic wrestling in the daytime? We often are too busy to dwell on the past, but at night our worries often increase. Haven't you ever struggled with your uh, conscience at night? Agonized over problems, been buffeted with fears of the day to come? Jacob had elements of deceit and trickery in his past. Okay, it was trick, trick, trick Esau. In the morning he would face the consequences of them. He had little sleep the night before. So it is symbolic. You cry, yes, I would respond. It is very symbolic, but it was physical too, okay? One can spiritualize away the injury to Jacob's hip socket and the limp that characterized his walk in later years. These were not just symbols of his encounter and humbling before God. They were physical remnants of the struggle. So when Jacob was injured um, and injuring his hip socket, it was a reminder of that struggle that he had with the Lord. Okay, so that's really, really powerful, you all. God always says a reminder of who he is. Sometimes we have troubles believing in events that we can't understand on the basis of our own experiences. We have experienced the mental and spiritual anguish and struggle of the night, but not the physical. And so we, we doubt this event is both physical and symbolic. So this is, this is very, very, very symbolic um, event that went on about the wrestling with, with the Lord. It, it's very, very symbolic, everyone. Now, now when, when he was saying, unless you bless me in 3226, somehow Jacob recognizes that this is no human assailant. This is a divine messenger who has the power to bless him. Jacob and the man are locked in combat, but are at an impasse. Neither can overcome the other, but neither wants to release his grip for fear that the other will take advantage of the moment. The man injures Jacob's hip, but still he holds on. The man finally says, let me go for it is daybreak. Jacob is tenacious and persistent. I will not let you go unless you bless me. Unless the man will speak words of peace and blessing to him, Jacob will not release him. What is your name, Jacob? Your name is no longer Jacob, meaning Sir Planter, but Israel, meaning that he struggles with God. Because you have struggled with God and with men and have overcome, 32, 27 through 28, a new name, Israel, 32, 28. This new name from God is significant. We see several times throughout the Bible that a new name is a sign of a new place with God, a new phase of faith. All right. 
Abraham renamed a Abram is renamed Abraham, the father of nations in 17.5. Sarai is named Sarah, princess, 17.15. Simon is renamed Peter, the rock, Matthew 6.16-18. One of the promises to people of overcoming faith and revelations is a new name, known only to who, him who receives it. All right. One of the promises of the people overcoming it, okay? God who has struggled with Jacob now bestows on him a new name to remind all that he has struggled with God, with men, and have overcome. 32.28. Jacob's new name now contains the name of God within it. What a heritage to be known as one who has met both God and man and succeeded. What a goal for us to strive for in our own spiritual uh, pilgrimage. Okay, you all, this is this has been so so much. Just it's, it's real powerful. If you just think about it, the fulfillment of it, it's about um him receiving it, receiving that identity in God, and it's about him receiving that blessing. Jacob was persistent and wanting to be blessed by God, and God honored him that blessing. He came to him with humbleness. Okay, and he would not let God go. So you all, this is so meaningful and so strong. You know, this this is a story to go back and look at and really pick it apart and just see how blessed he was to wrestle with God to receive that blessing of Abraham over his life. You all, because it it just changed who he was. It gave him the the prominence and to be able to approach his brother who he was afraid of he didn't know how his brother was going to treat him and his family he was really scared he went into God in prayer you know about his fear to approach his brother you know and he went back to his brother Esau and told him about all that God had did for him and wanted to get some of the blessings back to him so that is God. That is that is when you have a God giving heart. Okay, Th that's what God will do. God will change your name, make your name great. God will give you a new identity in Him. That's when when you receive God. You could be someone that tricked people. You could be someone that was pretty much acting in bad bad faith all always. But God can can remove. Your burdens, he could remove the wickedness from you. You could have betrayed people or betrayed someone, but God can give you mercy and bless you. Okay. He make you new in him. And 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 Jacob received that newness in him from God, from wrestling with God. So you all, we could take a lot from the story. You know, we you you just go to him. When you fearful about something, you're not sure about something, you're confused about something, you know, anything he says, we ought to take it to the Lord in prayer. So everyone, that's what we ought to do. Just like Jacob, we confess our sins, we confess our wrongs, we take it to the Lord in prayer. He was someone that was, was started with the seat even in the womb. Okay, so this, in this earth, this deceit, in our hearts is to seek in the flesh is to seek in the world. In order to come out that we must like wrestle with the Lord to see favor for to find favor in God, for God to bless us as He blessed Jacob. You know, no matter what we did in our life, no matter what was in our past. So this is very, very powerful, everyone. This is a very, very powerful story and lesson that we can take away from this with this. You give it over to God, no matter what you've done. Don't ever think you're too bad to be saved by the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. People done a lot of things against him, even myself. And he still sought favor over me. That's his grace and his mercy. Okay. And I want to thank him for everything that he's brought me through. So that's what you do. You confess and you humbly bow to him. You seek his face continually in prayer. You all, when you're confused, when you're lonely, you're stressed, you're depressed, you don't know which way to go, you want to give up, you seek God. 
just as 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 Jacob Jacob did. You hold on to God and you don't let go. You hold on, you hold on, and you don't let him go. He refused to let the Lord go. Okay? He said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. That's powerful. That's powerful. That's powerful, everyone. That is so powerful. Some powerful words. He was persistent. It wasn't about what he did. It wasn't about the trickery. It wasn't about the the him selling his birthright to him. It wasn't about him pulling on Esau's heel in the womb being facetious and deceitful. It was about him being blessed as, by God, being sanctified in God. He grew in his faith in the Lord. He became someone different. He became a new creature in that wrestle. So that's what we must do, you all. To stay firm in God. Don't let God go. Hold to his unchanging hands, everyone. You all be blessed in Christ. Be blessed. Be blessed, you all. Be blessed in Christ. This world is not our home. I always say this. And weeping may endure for a night and joy cometh in the morning. May the grace of God and the peace of God be on your lives, everyone. May God bless and anoint your homes, anoint your families. May we seek him first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added. You all, don't look at the world. Give it over to the Lord. Pray to God. If you're fearful, pray to God. Let him know you're fearful. Don't never be ashamed. He already know every hair on your head. He already know what you, you need. Okay, everyone. He's a friend. Jesus Christ is our friend. He is our friend, everyone. A friend indeed. So you all be blessed. I love you all. Thank you all for joining me. And thank you all. Let me know how you all feel about the videos. It's good to get input, you all. So thank you all and have a blessed day. Bye-bye. <laughs>